There's only one thing worse than getting betrayed by a lover, getting betrayed by your best friend. And I'm yeah. okay. Literally gonna get violent. No, there is no need to get violent. Sometimes it's just a misunderstanding or a little spat that ends up bringing two friends closer together. And I feel like I've lost a lot this year. I couldn't survive if I lost you. But other times, the pain cuts too deep and leads to feuds that last a lifetime. Breaking up with a romantic partner and the ensuing drama is a staple of film and TV. Oh, I'm sorry, were you speaking to me or sleeping with someone else? <laughs> We were on a break. But what about the heartbreak that comes from losing a friend? I wish never to see or speak to you again. Let's dive into some of the most heart-wrenching friend betrayals and breakups on screen to analyze why heartbreak doesn't just apply to romantic relationships and why those friendship breakups are actually more painful. Humans are generally quite social beings. Missed ya. I missed you. I missed you so much. Been one night. Are we gonna go to school or? Nope. Our interactions and relationships define the kinds of lives we live. No matter how shy or asocial someone may be, they still need some kind of socializing to survive and thrive. It might just look a little different for those who are more introverted. As Oberlin College noted in its introduction to its On Being Social Beings course back in 2021, we live in families, we work in teams, we envision duty and purpose through religious fellowship, we negotiate through economic alliances and political coalitions, and our norms are shaped by our culture, itself an emergent property of group living. From the moment we're born until the day we die, we rely on relationships to survive. I'm Joel. Look, you ate. We didn't kill each other. Let's call this a win-win and move on. There's the family that forms the foundation of our early social experiences, whom we connect with at the base level through genetics and kinship. And then we have our found and forged family, our friends. Did we just become best friends? Yep! Whether they're an acquaintance that gets you through that one awkward social gathering. So, uh, how do you know Kennedy? Oh, we go to school together. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Or the person you turn to for support at every twist and turn in life. Bitch, you're my soulmate. You associate through shared interests, aligned values, and eventually an emotional, spiritual, and personal connection. Unlike some family members and romantic partners, you choose your friends. Friends become our allies, confidants, and partners in navigating life's many challenges. You know, boyfriends and girlfriends are gonna come and go, but this is for life. So then it's no surprise that when a friendship faces hardship, it can be incredibly painful. As neuroscientist Matthew Lieberman explained to Scientific America, languages around the world use pain language to express social pain. As it turns out, it is more than a metaphor. Social pain is real pain. We aren't taught friendship in school, and things only grow more complicated as we grow older. When we're young, making friends can be pretty straightforward. Hi, guy. If you want, you could be as other mom with me. Really? But as we age, our developing morals and values, facing different challenges, geographical distance, and external pressures can drive wedges into even the purest friendships. Some of these challenges make friendships stronger. I just can't imagine my life without you. But others can shatter the relationship altogether, leaving one or both sides painfully scrambling to pick up the pieces. I was your only friend. Yet yeah, one friend. Worst of all, however, is when that wedge forms inside the friendship, particularly a betrayal that breaks the unspoken trust. It's like, you know, it sends each person into a dizzying spiral of wounded self-esteem, fractured senses of security and safety, and an altered portrayal of the world at large. You were the chosen one! It was said that you would destroy this and not join them! As Dr. Mariana Bakarova said on Psychology Today, when betrayal occurs in a friendship, the expectations of friendship, support, respect, loyalty, shared moral standards, honesty, reciprocity, or genuine connection are violated. In fact, betrayal trauma can also cause negative beliefs about our own sense of safety and trust on a wider scale. The ends of friendships often lack the clear-cut closure that romantic breakups might have, leading to unresolved feelings and unanswered questions that could last a lifetime. Additionally, a friendship between two people rarely only affects each other. Each person is often part of a larger social circle, and their breakup sends shockwaves through that community. It's just, you know, we've all become such good friends. Good friends? Do you, do you mean the people that I've known since kindergarten and you've known for six months? 
those good friends. It harms other mutual friendships and alters both their places in social circles. Losing a friend, especially through something as heartbreaking as betrayal, isn't just about losing that person. You're also losing a part of yourself. You lose the vulnerability, intimacy, support system, and future memories you could have made with them. <laughs> betrayal shows up in many different forms on screen, from hilarious misunderstandings that get resolved quickly to deeper schisms that can seem and might even actually be insurmountable. I'm trying to keep you from tearing the Avengers apart. You did that when you signed. All right, we're done. Whether it's a small, realistic story, over-the-top dramatic clash, or out-of-this-world chaos, friendship betrayal is always difficult. Like Krista dating Nadine's brother in The Edge of Seventeen, despite the siblings' animosity towards each other. You can't, you, you can't have both. It's me or him. Pick. No, I'm... No, I'm not gonna pick. The built-up tension and lies between Molly and Amy in Booksmart. You're selfish and mean! You're a bad friend! You're a f bad friend! Cruel, inconsiderate, or mistaken actions taken against the other, like when Martin outed Simon in Love, Simon. I'm supposed to be the one that decides when and where and how and who knows and how I get to say it that's supposed to be my thing. And you took that away from me. The back and forth betrayal and forgiveness between Emily and Camille and Emily in Paris. She pretended to be my friend while she had an affair with my boyfriend. Differences in morals or priorities like Tony Stark and Steve Rogers in Captain America Civil War. Charles Xavier and Eric Lencher in X-Men First Class. We want the same thing. <laughs> my friend. I'm sorry, but we do not. Wanda Maximoff and Agatha Harkness in WandaVision, and even Mark Zuckerberg and Eduardo Saverin in The Social Network, and so many more. Because you take everything from me! Nate, my mom, Blair. you can't even help it! It's who you are. People break boundaries, tell lies, and grow apart. And while there are many ways friends have been shown to betray one another, they all still have one thing in common. Heartbreak. Even lower stakes betrayals can get under our skin, like in Friends when Monica hung out and went shopping with Julie, Ross's current girlfriend, and thus Rachel's current arch nemesis. Did you go with her to Bloomingdale's? The show openly poked fun at the similarities between cheating on your romantic partner and cheating on your best friend. But we can expect our friends to be on our side no matter what. And so it can hurt to find out they're not, even when it's something relatively small. I feel terrible, I really do. Oh, I'm sorry. Did my back hurt your knife? This idea of friendship cheating has begun to show up more and more on screen as the importance of friendships has been allowed to gain equal footing to romantic partnerships. Take sex education, when Eric starts hanging out with other people and spending less time with Otis. You so got uninvited. Eric's friends with the popular kids now and he doesn't want you tagging along. That's harsh. Of course, it's also so much more complicated than that, as most things are. They're each struggling with their own personal issues, and since they're such different people in important ways, they can often struggle to empathize with the other. I just, I don't feel like you really heard what I've said. I don't feel like you've heard what I've said. Otis is focused on his relationship problems with Maeve and his mom, Jean, and Eric is struggling to reconcile his sexual identity with the unfortunately intensely judgmental community of his church, and feeling like Otis never truly listened to him. I'm just, I guess I'm just trying to say that we're very different and we don't really talk about it. Okay, but why are you blaming me for that? I'm not blaming you. Far from just being about growing apart, their conflict arose from a very complicated web of issues. It was the ultimate culmination of the tensions, insecurities, and differences that had been building between the two friends for a while. And that, combined with their history and long friendship, made their breakup hurt that much more. Maybe we need some time apart from each other. Yeah. One of the major threads of Euphoria's second season was Cassie's betrayal of Maddie, which we discussed at length in our Maddie video. The show didn't just leave it as some poorly sketched fighting over a boy scenario, and instead truly dove into the real pain at the heart of the conflict, being betrayed by someone you always thought you could trust. This isn't about Nate, this is about you and me and our friendship, and if you want to throw it away, then fine. Sure, Maddie was pissed about Nate being an asshole, but she was really broken by the fact that her best friend in the entire world not only lied to her, but did so to hook up with the guy who had treated her so terribly for so long. You're a f coward, and I would have never 
done this to you. But we also got to see Cassie's side as well, the deep insecurity and internal struggle that led her to be so desperate that she would throw everything in her life away for this one horrible guy. While the betrayal cut Maddie quite deeply, in the end, it did also spur her to take stock of her life, realize she didn't want to get stuck in this cycle, and begin making choices to center herself and her future. In more fantastical stories, we often see more overt good versus evil stories, where the good guy's friend betrays them for the riches or power of the dark side. A classic example is in Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back, where we felt the shock and heartbreak when Lando Calrissian betrayed Han Solo and the crew to Darth Vader. I had no choice. They arrived right before you did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. From Lando's perspective, he thought betraying Han was the best option in the long run and the safest option for himself. But Han's morals differed greatly. He would never betray his loved ones to the enemy for political, monetary, or personal gain. He may pretend he's selfish and indifferent, but we know better, Han. I love you. I know. Another heartbreaking moment in Star Wars was, of course, between Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker in Revenge of the Sith. Both men felt betrayed. Anakin blamed Obi-Wan for an imagined relationship with Padme and for not supporting him more against the Jedi Council. You will not take her from me! Your anger and your lust for power have already done that. Obi-Wan blamed Anakin for succumbing to the dark side and, well, murdering people. Anakin, my allegiance is to the Republic, to democracy! If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. On both sides, though, there was utter heartbreak, and both would carry that loss for the rest of their lives. And my friend is truly dead. Romantic breakups are tough, but at least you have your friends there to support you. But what happens when you break up with a friend? Who can you turn to for support? Without my cats, I am utterly and completely alone. Angel, you still have your son. I guess. On-screen betrayal stories have shown us the many different ways people try to deal with being betrayed by a friend. Don't call me. Don't come by my house. We're done. Everyone reacts to the betrayal, the loss, differently. Molly and Amy yell at each other. It was your plan! That was never my plan! It's always your I can't plan. believe you! Penelope and Eloise avoid each other at all costs. Tony and Steve, Cassie and Maddie, Wanda and Agatha, Obi-Wan and Anakin all try to kill each other. Don't make me kill you. But despite all the animosity and sadness between the friends, every now and then we're given some hope. We see that time, empathy, communication, and eventual forgiveness are entirely possible in these stories. Can we be friends again? Of course. The characters are sometimes given the opportunity to really reflect on the situation, take a look at the bigger picture, and sometimes even find avenues to empathize with the person that wronged them. And when people are willing to attempt to atone for their mistakes, they're that much closer to healing a fractured friendship. Because that's what friends do! They forgive each other! And this doesn't always happen in the snap of a finger. It can take a long time and a lot of work. One or both sides may decide that what happened can't be undone, and they're better off apart. I don't know, maybe who you are now and who I am now just don't fit anymore. Which in the end, despite the heartbreak, is sometimes the only real path forward. What matters though is that everyone in every relationship is different, and goodbye doesn't have to be forever if you're willing to put in the effort to make things right. I'm glad you came. I'm glad you called. Ultimately, dealing with friendship betrayal often involves navigating a labyrinth of unresolved emotions, shifting social dynamics, and a deep sense of personal loss. Yet in these narratives, we can also find hope. The journey through grief, self-reflection, and the possibility of reconciliation or acceptance reminds us that while the conflict within a friendship can be devastating, I don't bear the thought of losing you completely. I throw you. <clears throat> I understand. It also opens the door to new understanding and growth. The pain of being betrayed by a friend and the subsequent journey through the stages of grief underscore the profound value of these relationships in our lives. Watching these characters go through troubling times and relationships and still come out the other side, whether by healing together or moving on separately, reminds us that if they can do it, we can too. Come on. Let's go be psychos together. So what's your take on friendship betrayals? Did any of these betrayals break your heart? Did we miss any especially painful ones? Or did any betrayals teach you something? Let us know in the comments. That's the take. Click here to watch a video we think you'll love, or here to check out a whole playlist of awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.
and make sure to subscribe to our Patreon for exclusive new videos.